All right, so today I'm going to teach you how to run a quadratic regression on your graphing calculator. So if you don't have your graphing calculator in front of you, you definitely need to get that out first. So pause the video and go get it. Um, as you can see by all of the instructions that I have typed out here, um, you definitely need the calculator. Um, we do not learn how to do this by hand at all. Um, so the the calculator is a requirement, so if you don't have it in front of you, pause this um, and come back when you've got it in front. So the situation that we are looking at, um, we have this table here that is representing a science club that's launching a model rocket measuring its altitude. So the problem is, is that the um, device that they were using to measure the altitude stopped transmitting nine seconds after the launch, which means that after nine seconds, they no longer have data on the height of their rocket anymore. So um, if they want to be able to figure out some things about their rocket, then they would have to use the calculator to find what we call an equation of best fit. So when we are running quadratic regression on the calculator, we are trying to find a parabola of best fit. So quadratic regression finds a parabola of best fit. Now, in Algebra 1, you spent um, a decent amount of time on finding lines of best fit. So this is the same idea, just for a different type of pattern that we see um, on a graph. So first thing that I want to do is teach you how to um, do a scatter plot on your calculator. So I'm going to bring um, my on-screen calculator here and switch back and forth between the two. So here's my on-screen calculator. So to make a scatter plot, first you're going to press second and then y equals. So here's my second button. Here's y equals. And you want to choose a plot. Of course, it doesn't matter. I usually use plot 1, but choose whichever one you want. So you can press 1, 2, 3, or you can just press enter either way. So I'll press 1 to choose plot 1. Once you do that, you need to turn the plot on by pressing enter on top of on. Right now, off is darkened, which indicates that it's off. So if I press enter on top of on, it switches so that that is my choice. Um, these are just all the different types of graphs that your calculator can do. So this guy's a histogram over here. Um, this is a time series graph. We've got some box and whisker plots. Um, scatter plots are the first type. So most usually that's the default. Um, so it's probably already on that choice. But if it's not, then press enter on top of this guy um, before you move on. Next thing we need to do is we need to tell our calculator where the data for this plot will come from. And your calculator has various lists, um, I think at least six of them. Um, so we are going to tell our calculator that our X list is in list 1 and our Y list is in list 2. So if you have a brand new calculator and you have never used your plots before, that's probably the default. Um, but if you have a hand-me-down calculator or you're borrowing a calculator from someone, then this might not be what it says. So the way that you can change that to say whatever list you want, if you look down here, see how it says L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, L6, above each of those number keys, um, it's in blue because you have to press second before. So let's say I wanted to switch this to L3. Don't actually do this if yours says L1. You don't need to. But if I press second three, it's going to change that to say L3. Um, so if it doesn't say L1, press second one to change it, then scroll down to your Y list and make it say L2 by, um, by pressing second two. Um, you want the mark to be the leftmost mark um, because those are the easiest ones to see. They show up nice and big for you and you can see the different points on your scatter plot pretty easily. If you don't have a color version of the calculator, you're not going to see this color thing. Um, but certainly if you want to change the color of your um, little plots, you can. So maybe I'll make mine green this time. Um, once you've done that, then you press second mode because we're going to quit this screen. We've already selected everything that we need um, and my stat plot is ready to go. So 
Um, next thing I need to do is to actually enter the data into my calculator. So we are on step eight here. Um, so press stat, so stats right here. And then we're going to choose one for edit. Now you can see I've got all kinds of data in my list already because um, I use this a lot, especially in statistics class. So um, it tells you, um, we told our calculator that we wanted to put our X data in L1 and our Y data in L2. Um, I put a helpful hint here that if you need to clear an entire set of data, especially if you need to clear multiple lists, the easiest way to do that is to then, once you see the lists aren't clear, go to Stat again, choose Choice 4, and tell it to clear whichever lists you want. So you can do multiple lists. So I can press second one for L1, comma, second two for L2, comma, second three for L3, and then press enter. It'll just say done to indicate that it's done that. Um, you can just overwrite the data if you want to, um, but I think it's a lot easier to work um, with a clear list. So if I now go back to edit, you'll see that those three lists have been cleared. Now, you can clear lists individually, um, by scrolling up to the list name and pressing clear um, and then scrolling down. So that'll clear just L4 for me. The only thing I would suggest, though, if you're going to do that, please be careful because the clear key and the delete key are not the same. Clearing the list will work. If you press DEL, it'll actually get rid of that list altogether, um, which if you do that, um, I can fix it for you, um, but you probably won't be able to figure out how to fix that. So um, just be careful if you're going to do that. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and enter our data. So our time after launch is our list one data. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter 0 through 9. You press enter between each entry. So 0, enter, 1, enter, so on and so forth. I'm going all the way down my list from the table until I get to 9, which was the last value there. Once I get to 9, then I can press my right arrow, and that will skip me over to list 2, where I can then enter my height data the same way. So enter after each number, um, and be very careful when you're doing this. Um, obviously, if you accidentally you know, hit the 8 instead of the 9 or something like that, it's really going to screw up your answers. So it's really important that you are paying attention to detail and, um, and just being very careful when you're entering the data. So 378, and then the last one's 363. Okay. After you have the data entered, I would strongly suggest that you just take the 30 seconds that would be needed to double check all of it, just to make sure you didn't make a typo. Um, course list one is very easy to check. I can just kind of eyeball it. The other um, list I might have to look at a little more carefully, but um, as I'm finishing this sentence, I have already checked all of it. So I know that it's correct, but do take that 30 seconds to just double, um, double check because, again, it's um, bad if you have a typo in there. Okay, once all of your data is entered, we're going to press Zoom and then choose choice 9 because that is um, the statistic Zoom. So Zoom, choice 9 for Zoom stat. And you can see here, um, first of all, that I've got a um, scatter plot. You can see I've got something else here, too, and maybe you have something else. That's probably because you have equations in your y equals screen, so you probably want to either turn those off or clear those out. So I'm just going to clear that out because I don't need it right now. Um, also, zoom stats sometimes, depending on where your values are, 
you might not always be able to see your axes and you always want to be able to see your axes as well as the entirety of the type of equation you're trying to graph. So in this case, I am going to manually adjust my window. Um, I can see my axes, but I know that this, um, if I'm trying to find a parabola, it's going to go this way more. So I'm going to need more values on my x. So go to window. Right now it goes from negative 0.9 to 9.9. .9. Um, so maybe I want to change that um, from negative 1 to 20, counting by ones. Um, and then on my y min, I've got negative 64. So maybe I want to make that like negative 100. And it goes to 442. Maybe I'm going to make that 500. Oops, not 5,000. Um, and then I'm going to count, let's say, by 50s. Um, so that way I can see the scale too. And so now I can see I've got room over on the other side for my um, equation to grow. All right. Once you have done that, and again, it may take you a couple tries to know these buttons. So you can always go come back to this video and recheck if you are having trouble remembering. To actually perform the regression, meaning we're going to find the parabola of best fit that goes through these points, um, that's the second set of steps that I have listed here. So it says to perform regression, we're going to enter the data you want, which we already did that, um, because you don't always have to do the scatter plot if you don't want. You can run the regression as long as you've got the data entered in your lists. So um, since we've already done step one, we're going to skip straight to step two, which is to go to our stat menu, but this time we're going to scroll right to calculate. So stat, and there's calculate right there. And we've got lots of choices, but the one we want this time um, is quadratic regression. So if we wanted linear regression, we would choose choice four. This time we're choosing choice five. So choice five. Then it'll bring up this screen if you have one of the newer operating systems. So I need to tell it where my data is. So it's not in list three and list four. So I'm going to press second one to change it to list one, second two to change it to list, list two. You also need to tell it where to store the regression equation. Um, so down here, um, I've given some instructions. If you have the older model and don't see this screen that I gave you a screenshot here, I wrote this out over here. You'll just see either Linreg or Quadreg on the home screen. Um, on those models, you'll need to actually type in after, you know, where it says Quadreg, you'll need to type second one to get L1, comma, second two to get L2, and then you'll do a third comma, um, in order to type where we want the regression equa equation to go. So we're going to tell um, the um, we're going to tell the calculator um, that um, we're going to store our regression in our y equals screen. So um, the shortcut button you only have on the newer operating system. So I gave you a screenshot of that. I also gave a screenshot of what you would have to do on the older models. Um, so on the newer models, when I want to tell it to store the regression equation, I can simply press alpha and then trace and then choose which Y screen I want it to go into. I'm going to pick Y1 this time. Um, and then I can scroll down to calculate and press enter. If you have an older model, meaning when you press alpha trace, you don't get that, then that means that you'll have to do what I have here instead. After the comma, um, after L2, you'll press vars, and then you'll do what I've screenshotted here, scroll right to y vars, choose function, and then you'll be able to pick a y equals place. So on the newer models, you scroll down to calculate and press enter. On the older ones, you can just go ahead and press enter now. Um, it will spit out for you at the top the equation format. So this is telling you this is what the equation should look like, and then it gives you your values of A, B, and C. Your calculator may or may not have the R squared here. We don't need that at all. 
for this class. So if it doesn't have that, you don't need to worry about it. Um, but what I do need to worry about is writing down my parabola of best fit. So when I go here, it's going to be y equals, and then my a, let's say I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth. Um, that'd be negative 6.9x squared. So negative 6.9x squared. Then my B value is 103.8. Um, so if I'm just rounding to one decimal place, so plus 103.8x. So don't forget those x squareds and x's. And then finally, my C value, negative 11.8. So minus 11.8. And then that gives me my parabola of best fit. When we selected y1 as the place to store it, look, if I now type my y equals, it carries all those decimal places. If I keep scrolling over, um, you would see the x and um, the constant, all of those things. But it's in there in our y equals screen. And if I go to press graph again, we're actually going to see it then draw the parabola of best fit through my scatter plot points. And again, you don't always have to have the scatter plot turned on if you just want to graph the blue parabola and that's it, that's fine. One last thing of warning. If your plot is on and you are trying to graph things that are not involving that plot, um, you may get an error message. So if you're not using the plot, you need to make sure it's turned off. And the quickest way to do that is in the Y equals screen. So I can just press enter on top of it to turn it off. Now notice when I graph, I don't see the green dots. All I see is that parabola of best fit. Okay, so that teaches you how to actually get your parabola of best fit. In the next video, we'll talk about what we can then do with those parabolas and what we can find.